welcome back to Living in Surrender with your host, Faith Valentina. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. We have an amazing word to talk about. Um, I really believe that the Holy Spirit is going to move people's lives off of this word. Um, I've been praying about it to the Lord, you know, ever since I got it in my spirit. And I'm really excited to upload this video. So thank you for tuning in. Um, as you guys can see by the title, we're going to be talking about running to the Father. How important it is to run to him before we run to anything else in this world. You know, oftentimes we run to things that are not in his, one, we run to things that are not in his will. So, you know, some people run to drugs, to alcohol, you know, to sex. They run to just the things of this world that the Lord made it very clear that we should never abide in those things, but abide in him. Um, and then sometimes we just run to friends and family, which is amazing, but we need to run to the Lord first. We need to surrender, cast our cares, cast our burdens onto the Lord first. It's good to have community in Christ. It's good to have counsel in Christ and people that you can trust with, you know, what you're going through and trust that they're going to pray with you and trust that they're going to believe with you for God to move. But you, how are you going to receive that blessing? How are you going to receive that new beginning, that new season if you're not running to the one that can provide you with that new season running to the one who can lead you through the storm that you're going through who will hold your hand through the storm that you're going through so it's so important for us to truly 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 surrender and submit ourselves to the lord living in surrender that's why we're both learning me and you we're learning how to truly live our lives in surrender to the lord and that comes with truly running to him in every situation whether you're happy you're like oh praise jesus and you're running to him with joy or if you're running to him in sadness, grief, you know, sometimes we hope, sometimes we're mad at the Lord and we don't even realize that we're mad at the Lord because he's not moving on our timing. He's not doing what we think he should be doing. He's not doing, you know, he's not answering our prayers soon enough. So sometimes we can get upset with the Lord and we're not supposed to get upset because we have to believe that he, his timing is the most divine timing. And he's going to reveal those answered prayers and reveal the guidance that you need and reveal the path that he has for you according to his will and his timing. So today, like I said, we're going to be talking about running to the father, truly just running to him, dropping everything like he's like he, he is our father. You know, so running to him with his, his arms are open wide for us to run into them. But we need to be that child that runs like the prodigal son in the, in the Bible. How you just run back into your father's arms, no matter how far away that you've turned from the Lord, no matter how how long it's been since you've prayed, no matter how long it's been since you went to church, no matter how long it's been since you confided in him. He wants you to always run to him no matter what. So today we're going to be talking about laying everything down and running to our Abba. Amen. So before we get into the lesson, um, I do want to pray and unction in the Holy Spirit because it's it's just, how are we going to talk about Jesus, not invite Jesus to the, to the function? Like that makes no sense. So what we're going to do is we're going to pray. We're going to invite Jesus, the Holy Spirit and our Abba, and we're going to invite an angel, you know, the whole heavenly get down. We're just going to have a great time with them today. Um, so bow your, uh, bow your heads and close your eyes, please, as we talk to the Lord. Um, so just thank you, Jesus, right now for this moment in time. Thank you, Lord God, for this platform. I am so grateful and so thankful, Lord God, that you have trusted me to start recording videos, Lord God, and post them online to spread your, you know, the good news, to spread your word, Lord God, to guide those on the other side of the screen, to guide myself, Lord, because it's a learning experience for everyone involved. Lord God, we, I just thank you so much for my brother or sister on the other side of the screen. I just pray that you would speak to them, Lord, today. And I pray that whoever's watching this video was destined to watch this video, Lord God, that they... They need to run to you, Lord God. They long to run to you, Lord. They long for you to answer their prayers. They long for you to show them who you are, to show them that you're listening, to show them that you're hearing them, Lord. And just the fact that they found this video will remind them that you hear them, you see them, and you just want them to run to you, Lord. You want them to surrender everything, drop everything, and just trust in you, Lord. So, Lord God, I just thank you so much for what you're going to do through this video. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would just fill this room that I'm recording in. And I pray that you fill the room of the viewer on the other side of the screen. Fill their room. Encounter them with your joy. Encounter them with your peace. Encounter them with your love, Lord. And just bless them right now, Lord God. And I just thank you so much that this is another day, an another step in the right direction towards walking in full surrender with you, Lord. And I just thank you so much for the viewer on the other side of the screen. Lord God, bless us, guide us, allow your word to reside in our hearts, and allow your word to reside in our minds. Continue to change us every single day, Lord. All for your glory, not for our glory, Lord. We love you so much, Jesus, and it's in your name we pray. Amen. Okay, so, running to the Father. So, with today's lesson, and if I'm looking down, like I said, guys, I have my 
my book that I'm always looking at because um, I like to write when I'm in my time with the Lord I like to write this stuff down and then I'll record um, after I've gotten you know like what I feel like the Lord is telling me to talk about um, so with that being said so I have three bullet points for today um, and the two questions that I want us to keep in our mind as we're going through this video is what does it mean to run to the Lord and how do we run to the Lord so what it means to run to the Lord is to, like I said, fully surrender, fully submit, fully commit, fully just drop everything and run to him, give it to him, you know? And we're going to talk about what it looks like to run to him. And then we're going to talk about how do we? And so these three, so the first thing is we're going to talk about is his love, his love for us. That's the first thing we're going to talk about. And that helps us identify what it means to run to him. And then there's two other bullet points. I'm not going to spoil, but we're going to talk about two other things that relate to now, how do we run to him? How do we allow him to move in our lives? So number one is his love. So the Lord is our father above all else. He's our Abba. He loves us so much. Jesus died for our sins. He loves us so much. The Holy Spirit resides inside of us. They love us so much. You know, when we have to remember that every day, because when you remember your identity in Christ, you remember who God's called you to be. You remember who God has told you you are through his word. And he has called you as his son, as his daughter, as royalty in the kingdom of God. When he's called you out of your old life and called you into the new life, when you become a new creation in Christ, you know how much he loves you and how much he adores you, how much he values you, how much of a masterpiece you are in his eyes. So when you remember your identity in Christ and you remember how much God loves you, it becomes a lot easier to run to him. That's like that family member or that friend that you know they love you. Like, that's your dog. That's your ride or die. Or that's your family member. Or that's whatever. You know that they love you so much. So you can come to them and say, hey, I'm going through A, B, C, D. Help me pray. Hey, I'm going through this, this, and that. Do you have an ear to listen? Do you have a shoulder I can cry on? You know, you, you trust these people that you love because they tell you that they love you and their actions show it. Because we have to, you know, a lot of people, they'll say, I love you, but their actions don't show that. The Lord's actions always show that he loves us. And I want to back that up with a couple um, couple scripture uh, verses in, you know, in scripture as well. But Jesus literally died for our sins. You know, the biggest sacrifice, the biggest gesture of unconditional, you know, love that has ever been displayed to mankind. So the Lord loves us so much. And when we remember how much he loves us and cares for us, it truly helps us, you know, trust in him in the season that we're in. Whatever that may be, financial, situational, you know, um, relationship, you know, whatever it is that you're going through, you're like, okay, deep breath. The Lord loves me. The Lord cares for me. I know I can lay this at his feet and trust that he's going to move, right? Because of the number, the, the, the residing fact that he loves me, he loves you, he loves us, we're his children. So the scriptures that I wanna talk about, so the first one that I wanna have us pull up is gonna be Romans 5, um, so the book of Romans, and then it's gonna be um, chapter five, and it's gonna be verse eight. Um, and the word of the Lord reads, um, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Like I said, the number one thing, boom, Christ died for our sins. He, he, he lived a sinless, perfect life on earth. He came down from heaven, lived this perfect, sinless life, you know, lived for 33 years, then took on the most ultimate sacrifice, you know, went through what he went through, the torture, the pain, to set us free from our sins when he didn't deserve that. But he did it because he knew the price that had to be paid, you know? He knew that we needed, that's what he needed to do because there's life in the blood. So he had to shed his blood so that we had life in him. When you go to the doctor's office and they're testing, why do they need to test your blood? Because life is in the blood because they can see what diseases are in the blood. They can see, you know, what blood type you are. Life is in the blood. When, when someone passes away, no matter if it's gunshot wound, stab wound, tripping and falling and hitting their head, if you lose enough blood, you lose your life because there's life in the blood. Blood is life. So the Lord, God, our God, Jesus Christ, had to come to earth, shed his blood as an atonement for our sins to wash us clean and that's why we apply the blood of Jesus to everything because there's life in the blood Ooh, I'm saying guys so we have to remember that he came and did that ultimate sacrifice paid the ultimate price for us because he loves us so much and then another verse I want to talk about of, of God's love is Isaiah um, the book of Isaiah and it's going to be chapter 41 and then verse 10 
So that reads, um, so do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous hand, right hand. So what does this mean? So he's saying, and then right above that, actually in verse nine, if you're looking at your Bible or your phone, um, and then at the very end of verse nine, it says, I have chosen you and I've not rejected you. When someone chooses you, what does that mean? That they value, that they love you, that they see something in you. So he's chosen all of us. He loves us, all of us, so much that he's chosen us. He will uphold us. He will strengthen us. We have the victory in, in, the, in the name of Jesus. So doesn't that show his love even more? That he gives us these promises to strengthen us, to uphold us, to walk beside us, that he's chosen us, to not fear anything because he's with us? I feel loved. I don't know about you. This, you know, my God is saying he loves me. He cares me. I don't need to fear nothing. He'll always protect me. You know, he had provision over my life, prosperity over my life. Everything that you would look for in someone in a relationship on earth of someone to do to make you feel safe, to make you feel heard, to uphold you, to strengthen you, to guide you, to love you are all the things that our Lord is showing us that he, he does for us every day. You know, so talking about his love for us. And then the last one I want to talk about is it's, so it's book the book of revelation and it's verses um the book of revelation is chapter 21 and it's verse two and i want to talk about this because before we read it i want to give some background um so the lord says that we the church because the church isn't just a building we are the church you know he says that the church us we're his bride and he's the bridegroom so that displays his love for us even more because when you're getting married to somebody, that's a commitment. Commitment requires love. So he's committed to us. He's waiting for us. The way that a groom waits at the end of the aisle for their bride. He's waiting. He's smiling. He's crying. He shed a couple of tears waiting, you know, because he loves you so much. You're his beautiful bride. Just he, his arms are open. Like we talked about, his arms are open wide. Just waiting for you to run to him, running to him, you know? He is the bride. I mean, he's the groom and we are the bride. How beautiful of, you know, an imagery for that. How beautiful of an example of his love, you know? And so verse, so Revelation chapter 12, verse um, two reads, I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride, beautifully dressed for her husband. How beautiful is that? So that's how God views us as his, as his bride. And yes, even if you're a boy watching this or a man, he views you as his bride. And I know weird way in a way that he loves you so much and he's waiting for you. He has designed you for this moment to love him and to be with him and to have that moment of, you know, commitment and agreement and unity with him. When you become married and you are the bride and he is the groom, that's a commitment. That is unity in Christ. When you die to yourself, your old self, and you become a new creation in Christ, you're married to the to, to the Lord until he help until he guides your heavenly spouse, and you're still married to him, you know. But he will guide your heavenly spouse into your life at that point because you're fully. If you have the number one relationship with the Lord and you're fully committed to the Lord Jesus Christ, then he can send you that heavenly spouse or that kingdom spouse so that you both as a unit even come even closer and even and, and, and you know seek the Lord even deeper. And then he can use you guys as a power couple in the kingdom to advance the kingdom. Because God blesses marriage because it gives glory to him. But we have to be married to the Lord first. We have to love the Lord with all of our hearts first so that he can use us, so that he can guide us, so that he can keep us and protect us. But we have to have that unity. And it all cracks down to remembering how much Jesus loves you, how much the Lord, our Abba Father, loves you, how much the Holy Spirit loves you. So, when, like I said, when you know that love that they have for you, you, it makes you want to run to the Father before you run to anything else. Okay, God, like you love me so much, show me the way. Help me. Help me, please, Lord, because I don't know what to do in this season of my life. So please help me, you know? So remember that Jesus loves you so much. And, and if you've never, you know, encountered his love, if you're still, you know, a baby Christian, or even I've been a Christian for my whole life, you know, I had my season, y'all heard my testimony. So I had my season where I was being a lukewarm Christian, but I've always known about Jesus Christ, and I'm so thankful for that. But I had never encountered his love, his pure, genuine love, or at least to my knowledge, because he's always loved us. But to me, I never felt his love. I never allowed him into my heart until this past, you know, a couple years. This past year and a half, really, you know, the Lord's completely wrecked me and transformed me. And I'm a new creation in him. Finally, fully in Jesus name, I've been set free from anything of my past and I've been set free and it's completely released from anything, you know, that was holding me back in Christ. I know I'm a new creation fully in Christ now. Um, but what I was trying to say is 
If you've never experienced his love, ask him to show you. I promise he will show you his love. He will show you. Ask him to give you revelations, to give you dreams, encounters, signs, have people come to you. Have, you know, and he will use his people. He will use his nature. He will use the environment you're in. He will use his word. Read his word to understand his character and how much he loves you. You know, but ask, say, Lord, this love that faith is talking about, this love that my pastor is talking about, this love that your word talks about, show me, Lord, because I don't, I don't see it. I don't feel it. Lord, show me how much you love me, and I promise he will show you what it's like to be your groom. He will show you how much he loves you if you just abide in him, and if you give it to him, and if you surrender to him, and if you run to him. He will show you how much he loves you. He has so much love for you. Like, earthly words could never describe how much love he has for his children, how much love he has for us. As those verses explained, he has endless love for us. He has chosen us. He's chosen you, my brother or sister. He loves you so much. So that's step number one. So we're talking about what does it mean to run to the Father, to know he loves us, to know he cares for us, to know that he's with us in everything, every aspect of our lives. He is there listening, waiting. You know, he prays on our behalf. He intercedes on our behalf. Jesus intercedes on our behalf and he prays for us, you know. And so he loves us unconditionally, more than words could ever describe. And just what he did on the cross for us truly shows us that. Him doing the ultimate sacrifice and doing something that he did not have to do. And he did it because he loves us so much. And he wants to be reunited with us like the bridegroom. He wants us to be reunited with him. He wants us to love him and trust him and walk with him. He wants us to run to him. Okay, so number one. So in your mind, and if you're taking notes, or if you're keeping it, you know, keep it in your spirit. He loves you so much. So, 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 so much. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. He loves you. Say it. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. God loves me. In Jesus' name. Okay, so that was number one. So that's... What does it mean to run to the Father? To know he loves me, okay? So, now the second things are, so now remember I said the second question that we're gonna, the topic of discussion today is, how can I run to the Father? What does it mean to run to the Father? What does it look like to run to the Father? You know, in my situation, of, in, during my storm, during my joy, during my peace, during my fear, during my every situation of your life, what does it mean to run to the Father? I mean, how, how can we run to the Father? So. The two bullet points we're going to talk about with that are prayer and trusting in him. So with prayer, the reason why prayer is step number one of how to run to the Father, what to do to run to the Father, is because when you're praying, you're able to lay it down. Prayer is communication with the Lord. Prayer is the number one way that you communicate with the Lord. So the same way you communicate with friends and family when you're going through something is the same way that the Lord wants you to communicate with him. He wants you to tell him. Of course, he's all-knowing. He's omnipresent. He sees everything. But he wants you to say, Lord, I'm struggling with this. Lord, I'm hurt by this. Lord, I'm upset by this. Lord, that person hurt me. You know, why aren't you answering this prayer, Lord? I'm believing for this, Lord. I'm sad. I'm depressed. I'm angry. I'm stressed. You know, he wants you to lay it down. Lord, I need, I, I'm having a financial issue right now. Lord, help me. Lord, I have, I need healing in my body for this. Lord, help me. Lord, this person did me wrong. Help me. I feel pain. I feel, you know, everything. He wants you to run. He wants you to tell him verbally. If you're upset with the Lord, he wants you to tell him like, oh my gosh, Lord, I'm upset because I feel like you're not answering this prayer on time. Or Lord, I'm upset because why would you let that person do me like this? He wants you to talk to him. Because then he can really, then he can really analyze your heart. If you lay everything, you pour everything out from your heart to him. Then he can start to work in your heart. When you speak it out loud, say, Lord, I have, I can't, I don't know if I can forgive that person because, well, I don't know if you can heal. Him. If, he, if he wants you to cast your cares and your burdens onto him, he can see what you're going through, but he wants you to give it to him verbally. Lord, I give this to you. This is burdening me. This is, this is hardening my heart. This is causing me, you know, stress, anxiety, sadness, depression, whatever it is. Give it to him. Lay it down at his feet. You know, um, believing that he loves you and that he hears you. Because when you're, when oftentimes when we're laying these things down to the, the Lord, the enemy will come in and say, oh, the Lord doesn't care. The Lord doesn't hear you. You see how he's not answering your prayers on time. You see how he's not really giving you anything. You know, you see how he's not showing you anything right now. You still feel this way. You still feel that way. The Lord doesn't hear you. No, you need to go to the Lord in prayer 
and believe that he hears you, believe that he sees you, believe that he's working behind the scenes. Even though he may not be moving in that moment, he's work everything's according to his divine timing and his divine will for your life. And he knows the best plans that he has for you. My favorite verse, one of my favorite verses ever, Jeremiah 29, 11. For I know the plans that I have for you, never to harm you, but to prosper you. So you have to, when you're laying these things down to him, when you're casting these cares onto the Lord and you're giving him your burdens, you have to believe and remember he has the best plan for you on his timing though. You know, so we have to remember when we're going into the, 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 you know, our secret places, when we're praying that he loves me, he's here with me, he hears me, he sees all my tears, he sees all my hardships, he's working on my behalf, the Lord is with me in this moment. Build your foundation on that fact that he loves you. Build your life on him. He is the rock. Build, you have to go into prayer knowing and believing faith. You have to have faith that the Lord hears you and he's going to move. Faith is believing the things that are unseen, but knowing that the Lord, what the Lord has told you through his word, knowing that it's true, knowing that he's a faithful God and knowing that he's going to move. He's going to move. You have to have that faith every day that whatever situation you're in, he's going to move and he's going to release you from that season in due timing. So the verse that I want to read, the two, I have two verses in regards to laying it down, surrendering, praying to the Lord. And that's going to be, so the first verse is Philippians, and it's going to be chapter 4, and it's verses 6 through 7. And um, so the word of the Lord reads, Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God, and the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Jesus in, in Christ Jesus. So do not be anxious about anything. Don't worry about anything. Just trust that the Lord is going to move. And be thankful. You know, He wants you to be thankful for what He's already doing in your life, even though the situation you may be in may be really, really hard. A lot of us go through a lot of hard things. Trust me, I understand. This world is not easy. But He asks that we would understand that He's with us, that He loves us that we can trust him and he says with prayer and stuff with prayer and petition I mean you're going at his feet constantly you're not supposed to just say one prayer and then never pray again you're supposed to pray 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 until something moves amen pray until something happens push pray until something happens if there's one thing you remember from this video push Pray until something happens. Run to the Father and pray until something happens in Jesus' name because something will happen. The Lord will always move in Jesus' name. And then the second verse that I want to talk about is going to be Matthew chapter 6 and it's verse 6. And the word of the Lord reads, When you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. When you, the Father who sees what is done in secret, he will reward you. So, what this is saying, so like I said, laying it down. When you want to pray to the Lord, you know, sometimes a secret place could even be your car. It doesn't have to be your bedroom or a prayer closet, you know. Sometimes it can, just wherever you can have quiet time with the Lord. Your patio in your house, wherever, you know, I like to go on my patio a lot, you know, because I go early in the morning and there's not a lot of commotion going on, not a lot of people on the roads or the streets. I like to go to my patio and spend time with the Lord, with hearing his breeze, hearing the birds, you know, truly just being in his presence in nature. But sometimes I'll do it in my room. Sometimes I do it in my car. But what he's saying is close the door, block out all outside distractions, put the phone on D&D, &D, you know, you know. Focus on that moment with him like you would when you're hanging out with a friend. When you're with a friend, you're not doing a bunch of other things and, you know, you're not always on your phone, you're not texting, you don't have a lot of commotion going on. You're focused on being with that friend in that moment, right? You're talking with that friend, you're communicating with that friend, you're outpouring whatever you're going through to that friend. So the same way when, you, when you're when you praying, he wants you to close the door, close out those external distractions and fully press in with him. Lay it down to him. You may cry. That's okay. <laughs> You may cry. You may, you know, you may, you, be, you may be brought to your knees. It's happened to me a couple times. But the Lord is moving you. When you feel your heart, he's repairing your heart, restoring your heart. Every time you lay down to him and you pray and you pray and you pray and you give it to him, he is moving in ways sometimes you cannot see. It says when the Father is unseen. But he's moving. He's omnipresent. He is around. He sees you. He's always there. You, If you ask the Lord to be with you and, and join you in your secret place, if you ask him to fill the room with his presence, he is there. I promise you. Sometimes he's a little bit further back to where, like, you know, you won't, you won't feel him all the time. But he wants you to believe and trust that he's there. Faith. Faith. 
Faith, you have, when you have faith, it's th in things that are unseen. So you have to have faith. The Lord is with you in this moment. The Lord is here, and He's listening, and He, you know, He and, and He hears all my prayers. He sees all my tears, and He is moving in Jesus' name. So, how can you run to the Father? You have to pray. You have to lay it down. You have to outpour your heart. Tell Him what's going on, and I promise He is listening. Close the door. Close the door. And focus on him. Eliminate the earthly distractions. If you need to get off of social media, if you need to stop watching TV, stop watching your favorite Netflix TV show, if you need to stop listening, you need to stop listening to secular music, you know, and then watch what you're watching on Netflix because there's a lot of things on there that are not of the Lord. But secular music's got to go, you know, like, like truly live to where he can move in your life. You know, when you're fully living for Christ, he can use you, he can guide you, he can keep you. So when you're running to him, he can fully, you can fully hear him. You can fully be like, okay, God, what are you trying to show me in this season? What's the plan for this season? <laughs> you know, Lord, like, what can I do to get out of this season? What, you know, what are you trying to teach me in this season? You know, laying it down to him, laying down your situation, laying down your problems, laying down your thoughts, giving him your heart, allowing him to change your heart posture, to change the way your mind is thinking about the situation. Lay it down to him. Pray, 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 pray. And then number two, trust. We have to trust in the Lord. How can you run to the Father? You trust in him. What does it look like to run to the Father? Trusting in him, abiding in him. So the verses that I want to read it's going to be Proverbs chapter 3, and it's going to be verses 5 through 6. And the word of the Lord reads, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways submit to him, and he will make your paths straight. So, when you're trusting in the Lord with your situation, whether that, you know, like I said, we, we listed a bunch of different situations that you could be in, but your current situation... When you're trusting in him, you have to lean out on your own understanding. So you, you know, like I said, unseen. Faith is having th believing in things that are unseen, believing that the Lord is moving behind the scenes. Sometimes you will not see what the Lord is doing in that current moment, but then fast forward, you know, a couple of months, you'll see what the Lord was doing. You know, he will prevail. His will will prevail and he will bless and guide your life. But you have to run to him. You have to press into him. So when you're trusting and you're submitting all your ways to him, when you're living in surrender, like we talked about, when you're dying to your old self and living in your new self in the spirit, you're died to your flesh, you're buried. When Christ was buried, you know, and you rose again, when he brought you to new life in him, when you became a new creation in Christ, you know, so you have to sit, when you submit all your ways to him, you can fully trust in him, walk with him, allow him to lead you like a father leads a son. Lead me, Lord. Take me, Lord. If I'm, you run into someone's arms and they pick you up, now they're holding you, right? You're hugging someone because you ran into their arms. They're, you're, they're holding you. Allow the Lord to hold you today. Allow the Lord to be your comforter, to be your protector. Seek him above all else, you know? Press into him. He has so many promises that he's given us, but we have to trust in him. We have to trust that he knows what he's doing. The situation that we're in is temporary. Fully just running into his arms and saying, Lord, I don't know what's going on, but I trust you. I trust you, Jesus. I trust you, Abba. I trust you, Holy Spirit. Lead me. Lead me. Show me the way. We need to abide in him. I want to read the verse. It's, it's um, the book of John. So John, and then it's chapter 15, verse 5. He says, this is Jesus speaking. He says, I am the vine. You are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. From me, you can do nothing. So from apart from me, you can do nothing. When we are one with God, he can guide us and lead us. The way that the vine leads, you know, we are the branches. We need the vine. We need the Lord. We abide in him and we will bear much fruit. Bearing much fruit, blessings. Bearing much fruit, fruits of the spirit. But without him, we can do nothing. So how, how do we run to the father? We abide in him. We trust in him. We seek him for his direction to lead us out of the situation that we're in. To guide us through the season that we're in. What are we supposed to learn in this season? Because everything happens for a reason when you're walking with the Lord for sure. 
Allow the vine to guide you. Allow him to guide you. Abide in him. Seek him. Spend time with him. Spend time in his word. Pray to him. Worship him. Get involved in community. Abide in the Lord. And he can move in your life. He will move in your life. He says, abide in me, me and you and you and you and me. Unity, bride and groom, unity. Run into, he's, your, his arms are wrapped around you. You ran into his arms. Out. He, you, he's got you. He says, I'm, I, 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 I'm with you, my brother or sister. I mean, my son or daughter, you know, I love you. I am with you. Trust in me. Walk with me. Seek me. Sorry about that. My camera died. Um. But like I was saying, uh, when we abide in the Lord, he can abide in us. He will abide in us. You know, he will fill us up with his word and his will and his love and his grace and his peace and his patience and his self-control and everything, you know, that we we need and that we're called to be in him. Um, so to wrap things up <laughs> with this video, number one, his love. We need to remember how much he loves us, how much he wants us to run to him, to cast our cares, to cast our burdens onto him, to know in our spirits that we are one with him, that he is our Abba Father, that he has called us to choose him, to walk with him, to love him the way that he loves us. So number one, remembering how much he loves us. Number two, praying, laying it all down at his feet, surrendering everything to him. No matter how much you're like, oh, God already knows the situation that I'm in. No, I mean, yes, but he wants you to tell him, talk to him the way that you would, you know, your brother or sister or Christ or your family, talk to him, tell him what's going on, you know? Um, so prayer, laying it all down. And then number three, trusting in him and abiding in him. When we run to him, so he's got us, he's holding us. Now we need to abide. We need to rest. We need to trust. That he's got everything under control and that he hears us, he sees us, and he's walking with us. Abiding in him, allowing him to lead you, to guide you during the season that you're in. In Jesus' name. And yeah, so those are the those are the three things that I really wanted to just talk about. You know, so what it means to abide in him, to know he loves us, to love him back. Then how do we? By trusting, by praying, you know, persistently, going into that secret place, locking the door. Eliminating all distractions, giving our time to the Lord, saying, look, God, I need you. I cannot do this without you. I will not do this without you, Lord, and watch him move in your life. So today, my prayer for you guys is to truly just love him with all your heart. Remember, he loves you to pray. Talk to him, guys. He's longing just to hear your voice. He's longing there, sitting there waiting for you to just come to him and talk to him. Have that moment with him. Go to your secret place. He's waiting there for you. And then three, trusting in him, abiding in him, trusting his process, trusting his timing, trusting that he knows the plans he has for you to never harm, you know, to never harm you, but to prosper you. Abide in him, allow him to guide you guys. And that is how you run to the father. That's how you give the father everything that you're going through and you allow him to move in your life and in those around you by the way that he's moving in your life. Because when you can testify to what the Lord's done in your life, then you can touch other people and help them seek the Lord because you're like, look what God's done for me. When I ran to the Lord, look what he did for me. Look what he showed me. Now, hey, look what God's trying to show you, my brother or sister. The Lord has the same thing. The Lord, what the Lord did for me, he'll do the same thing for you. And that's what we truly just have to remember all the time, you know. Trust him, love him, seek him, press into him. I promise he will meet you exactly where you are, wherever you are. You don't have to come perfect, clean. That's what the that's why Jesus died on the cross. That's what the blood of Jesus is for. He wants you to come as you are. Whatever situation you're in, whatever scenario you're in in your life, whatever chapter of your life you're in, no matter how young or old you are, meet him where you're at. And he will meet you, I promise. He's just waiting for you to seek him. Abide in him. God loves you so much, and I just pray that during the season that you're in, that you'd fully surrender to him. Keep pressing in. Trust him with your whole heart. And don't let the enemy get in your head that he doesn't hear you, that he doesn't see you, that he doesn't love you because it's a lie. And God loves you so much. Look back at the verses that we talked about today, the chapters that we talked about, whenever you're feeling that doubt, and remind yourself of how much he loves you and how much he cares for you and how much he's listening to you. 
I pray that more and more every single day that you will learn to live a life in full surrender. And that starts with turning to Jesus every day. Wake up and turn to Jesus. Wake up and look to him. Set your mind on things above. Let him guide and lead your life in all aspects. Thank you guys so much for watching today. And I just pray, like I said in this season, that you would give it to the Lord. He loves you so much. And if no one's told you that today, I will tell you that. And then ask him to tell you. I promise he'll show you that he loves you. I hope you guys have a blessed and wonderful week. I pray that God just protects you and surrounds you with garrisons of angels and hedges of protection to surround, protect, to keep you throughout this week. And that you would every single day learn to abide in him and learn to live your life in full surrender to him. God bless you guys. Jesus loves you and so do I. Bye.